let's talk about hypo and hypernatremia. When I'm talking about hypo and hypernatremia, I'm talking about the salt levels in the blood. And so this is a bit of a doozy a topic, so we're going to become kind of quick. And what makes it confusing, there's a lot of similarities between the two. To start, the salt level should be between 136 and 145. So anything lower than 136 will be on the hyponatremic side. Anything greater than 145 will be on the hypernatremic side. Too much salt. So, causes. Well, there is some overlap here. Whenever there is fluid loss in the body, whether it's diarrhea, vomiting, uh, loss uh, from wounds or from burns, you're going to be losing fluid and you're going to be losing electrolytes. Sometimes the ratio changes based off the patient. So, you'll see a cause of hyponatremia is loss of sodium through burns and vomiting and diarrhea. But hypernatremia, you can also cause water loss through burns and uh, vomiting and diarrhea. So it really it depends on the patient. You'll see some overlap there. Some more obvious causes for these two. Low sodium could be decreased sodium intake from a low salt diet or being MPO. And if you have a high sodium intake, it can lead to hypernatremia. Hyponatremia could be caused by a dilution such as chronic kidney disease, you're holding on the fluids, heart failure, you're holding on the fluids, or if you're just getting a lot of IV hypotonic fluids, this would be like half normal saline or D5, there's not enough salt in it, and there's just a lot of water in the patient. In hypernatremia, uh, holding on to sodium, diseases such as chronic kidney disease, I told you sometimes you hold on the fluids, but sometimes the patients hold on to salts. It depends on the patient. Uh, other diseases, which are more specific, would be like Cushing's or hyperaldosteronism, where it's specifically holding on to salt. So now let's talk about signs and symptoms. So here's a big difference here. Hypo causes weakness, and hyper causes twitching. This has to do with the sodium-potassium pump, and long story short, if you don't have enough salt to do the sodium-potassium pump, you're not having good contractility and, and muscles, so it's going to cause weakness. Whereas if you have a lot of salt, the sodium potassium pump is going to be an overdrive, and so it could cause twitching. But in both cases, you're going to have confusion, seizures, or comas because these are both very important roles in the electrical signals, and the brain has a lot of electrical signals. So if there's too little or too much, you can cause confusion, seizures, or coma. Now, you'll see with hyponatremia that you can cause diarrhea, nausea, and cramping. This is typically because salts and potassiums kind of are an inverse, like the sodium potassium pump. So imagine low salts equal increased potassiums, and this isn't always the case, but the way it responds, if you have high potassium, the body's going to want to have diarrhea and nausea and vomiting to get rid of that potassium. With hypernatremia, though, you're just going to have a lot of thirst uh, to try to get yourself some fluids to help dilute yourself, and your tongue's going to be sticky, and all the mucous membranes aren't going to have enough fluid, enough water. You'll see with hyponatremia, you may have increased amount of urine, which is causing you to uh, try to get rid of fluid so that your salt and water levels are better. Whereas with hypernatremia, you're holding onto urine in response to increase your fluid levels to balance out. In both cases, you may see changes in blood pressure and pulse rate, and this just depends on the cause. If the patient's holding on the fluids, this could increase their blood pressures. If the patient is uh, losing fluids, then it could cause their blood pressures to drop. Okay, and if you're holding on the fluids, uh, typically your heart rate, as I was trying to compensate, may increase. But the same if your fluid levels are low in your body, your heart's trying to pump extra to get those fluids running. So you may have tachycardia in both cases. Now, what it comes down to is treating the cause. So with hyponatremia, what you want to do is you want to give them salt. So they don't have enough salt. You're going to give them salt, and typically you do it nice and slow because you don't want to cause problems with the brain. And the brain, in both these cases, you're going to want to go nice and slow, bring it back slowly. So you want to give them either IV uh, salt sodium in IV fluids, or you can give them salt tablets. Either case, monitor their level of consciousness and their mentation. With hypernatremia, uh, these patients may need hypotonic or isotonic fluids to give them more fluids to dilute the salt. You want to give them a sodium restriction so they're not eating more salt and getting more salt in their body. Uh, increase their fluids. The same way you're giving them IV fluids, you want them to drink more. And, and like I said, with both cases, you need to monitor the level of consciousness and the mentation. So this is hypo and hypernatremia.